People are often taught that the Hawaiian island chain, which is formed by a mantle hotspot, has the following ages, with islands getting progressively older to the west, matching the direction of the Pacific tectonic plate has moved during that time span. Yet, this isn't the full story. As, what if I were to tell you that the big island with its four active volcanoes Kilauea, Mauna Loa, Hualalai, and Mauna Kea, in addition to the island of Maui with its Haleakala volcano, were not the only Hawaiian islands to in recent geologic timescales produce volcanic eruptions? As, for example, Hanauma Bay on the island of Oahu formed an explosive volcanic eruption only 30,000 years ago. Or, the basaltic rock around the spouting horn blowhole on the island of Kauai, which is only 150,000 years old. Or, on Molokai, we have a peninsula which jets out from the northern section of the island with a prominent vent and small ravine where lava tubes once existed, having all formed in a brief time span around 350,000 years ago. What these three sets of volcanic rock on separate islands have in common is that they all represent an interesting phenomena often witnessed in island-based shield volcanoes that is, a phase of some shield volcanoes' lifespans referred to as rejuvenated volcanism. This is best shown via a graphic I have created which shows the time span when each of the main eight Hawaiian islands was in an active phase with occasional eruptions. Note how the five oldest islands all have produced long pauses in eruptive activity lasting from 150,000 to several million years in length, before being followed by an onset of more volcanic activity. I have now color-coded all of the rejuvenated volcanism in orange. If you are wondering why Maui has orange surrounded by two reds, that is because the orange represents rejuvenated volcanism from the now-extinct West Maui volcano, while the surrounding red represents eruptions from the still-active Haleakala volcano. Thus, here are the areas rejuvenation stage volcanics covered on each island. After building a vast shield volcano between 5.7 and 4.7 million years ago, the island of Niihau produced a series of Bohoihoi dominated lava flows on its western half between 2.3 million and 400,000 years ago. These formed a fairly flat section on the island. The most recent vents erupted on the northern section of the island with a tuff cone forming 400,000 years ago. Kauahi's rejuvenation stage volcanism occurred between 3.85 million and 150,000 years ago, building low-lying vents, some of which are still quite visible today, on the southeast section of the island. The island of Oahu was constructed via three separate shield volcanoes, but approximately 1.3 million years ago, after the Kuulahu volcano had not erupted for 200,000 years, it collapsed into the ocean in a massive landslide. Removing one-third of the island, this seemingly sped up the eventual rejuvenation state's volcanism, allowing it to occur beginning 900,000 years ago and continuing to 30,000 years ago. This activity most famously constructed a series of explosively formed tuff cones on Mars, including the Diamond Head Tuff Cone, in addition to a series of lava flows which were generally centered slightly offshore or near the shoreline on the eastern third of the island. After Molokahi ended its main phase of eruptions 1.3 million years ago, a brief series of rejuvenated eruptions occurred around 350,000 years ago, forming a 3.7 square mile peninsula and building a slightly more than 330 foot high vent. Kaho Olave's brief rejuvenated eruptions 950,000 years ago produced a series of very small volume lava flows on the eastern edge of the island. While the Haleakala volcano was erupting, the West Maui volcano went on to produce a series of cinder cones around its eastern and southern edge between 610,000 and 440,000 years ago. As to why rejuvenation stage volcanism seemingly occurs at some but not all shield volcanoes, it might relate to their size. I hypothesize the following. The Hawaiian islands and their crust naturally float on the mantle. The thicker the crust is, the more it sinks downwards, hence natural subsidence on Hawaii's big island. On the other hand, islands which have experienced a significant amount of erosion now have less mass in a concentrated point than they did before, causing islands such as Oahu to rise. This uplift causes decompression melting to occur in the lithosphere, causing small batches of magma to intrude into the crust via weak points before occasionally erupting onto the surface in rejuvenation states eruptions. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.